Hey folks, so today we're going to look at solving sine function inequalities. And the steps are going to be quite similar to solving sine functions uh, that we were looking at last week, uh, kind of with one step added in at the end to, to write our solution. So let's take a look at our steps first and then we'll do an example together. So the very first thing, you know, like a lot of functions that we've looked at, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to change our inequality to an equality. And once we do that, we're going to solve it in exactly the same way that we were last week with the way that we were solving equalities. And if you don't remember, that's okay. We'll do an example together where we're doing that solving. After we have our solutions, we need to look at a sketch, or you can use a test point if you prefer. For sine functions, you know, I really prefer taking a look at a sketch. I find it a little bit easier, so that's the way that I'll show you. Um, but we need to, to like look at a sketch or use a test point to figure out our intervals. And then finally, we're going to have to think about the domain, right? Just like we were, uh, like just like we had to do when we were solving sine functions, you know, we need to we need to consider the answer given a domain. And if there's no domain given, we need to kind of generalize our answer. So those are our steps. And now that we have our steps, let's uh, take a look at an example. We'll do an example together. So let's say that we have the following function. So we have negative sine 3x plus 1 half. And we want to know where is this function greater than 0. Right. This, this could also be great in right, where is this function positive. Right. And then once we have this, we're going to write our answers. We're going to take a look at two different uh, domains. So one is when x is between 0 and 2 pi. And we'll see what that answer looks like. And then we'll also write a solution uh, over uh, from, from negative infinity to positive infinity. And so we'll just kind of compare what those answers look like and what changes. So our first step, let's write this out. We want to know where this is greater than 0. So that means where negative sine of 3x plus 1 half is greater than 0. And if we remember our first step, the very first thing we want to do is change this inequality to an equal sign. And now we'll solve it like we were solving last week. We'll isolate our sine. So we'll subtract 1 half from both sides. And then we'll divide both sides by negative 1. And we'll change this into theta. All right, so sine of theta is 1 half. We'll solve for theta. This is a nice one. It's on the unit circle. If it wasn't, then we would solve it like we've solved before. So theta either equals pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6, which means that 3x is the same as pi over 6, or 3x is the same as 5 pi over 6. So let's solve for both of those. Thank you. 
If we divide both sides by 3, we get x equals pi over 18 and x equals 5 pi over 18. Okay. So that's quite nice. These are our two solutions. And if we were solving an equality, we would consider our domain and be done with it. But because we have an inequality, it really does make sense to do a quick sketch. Okay, so here's our solving. Now let's look at our sketch. Okay. Uh, one thing that's important, right, when we're sketching is the period, which is 2 pi over b. And I'm going to rewrite this fraction, this 2 pi over 3, I'm going to rewrite it with a fraction with our denominator the same as the denominator for our solutions. It's just going to make these a little bit easier to, uh, to find on our graph. So 2 pi over 3 is the same thing as 12 pi over 18, right? And I, I want this 18 to match these 18s down here. Um, you know, for, for this sketch, one other important thing is if we multiply a times b, it's less than zero. So that means from our starting point, we're going to start by decreasing. And hk, let's just write that in, h is 0, k is 1 half. So our starting point is 0, 1 half, and we're going to start by decreasing, and it's going to take 12 pi over 18 to get back, right? We'll do one full cycle at that point. So let's take a look at a sketch here. So here's zero, and then here's 12 pi over 18. And let's draw another cycle in as well. All right, so another 12 pi over 18 is gonna give us 24 pi over 18. And then let's start plugging in what we know. Well, we know we're starting at the point 0, 1 half. We know we're starting by decreasing halfway uh, between these two is 6 pi over 18. And then our other important points right, are halfway in between here, which is going to be 3 pi over 18. and 9 pi over 18. And so we start by decreasing, and then increasing, and then back. So this point, we're back to our starting point. And what else do we know? Well, we know some important pieces. We know that at pi over 18, we're actually at zero. So we could put that in. Here's our pi over 18. We're at zero. And at five pi over 18, we're back at zero. So, you know, not the most beautiful sketch, but, but I think it's enough to give us everything that we need. We are interested in where this function is greater than zero. And 
So we know that it's greater than zero. We can just look, right? Zero is our x-axis. So we know it's greater than zero from zero to pi over 18, right? That's our first spot we know that it touches there. So from zero to pi over 18, we know that the function is greater than zero and it's excluding, uh, it is including our zero and excluding our pi over 18. And then our function goes below zero and back at five pi over 18, we're above zero again. Well, we need to know kind of what these next points are, right? Where does this come back down? Well, that's just this point where it crosses our x-axis initially plus our period. So this point here, right, this was 1 pi over 18, so this has to be 13 pi over 18, right? If we take this plus 12 pi over 18 gives us 13 pi over 18. So that means the function crosses 0 again at 13 pi over 18. And now it's going to be below 0. Where does it cross here? Well, that's this point plus our period. So 5 pi over 18 plus 12 pi over 18 gives us 17 pi over 18. And where would it cross again? It would cross again right here. We add a pi to this, so at 25 pi over 18. And we're not at 2 pi yet. And for our answer A, we need to go from 0 all the way to 2 pi. So we need to keep going. 17 pi, plus 18, 17 pi over 18 plus 12 pi over 18 is going to give us 29 pi over 18. And 25 pi over 18 plus 12 pi over 18 is going to give us 37 pi over 18, but that's bigger than 2 pi. That's bigger than our ending. So we end at the end of our domain, which is 2 pi. And there's our solution for A. Even though our sketch didn't continue on, right, we could keep adding our period to each of these. Right? We find our first solution. This is like a partial, right? This isn't the whole bit. So we find our first one and we add our period to both of these repeatedly until we reach the end of our domain. Well, what happens if we don't have a domain, right? What happens if our domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity? Well, we take our first solution. We take this first set and we add, and this is going to be familiar to you, we add our period times n. So we have 5 pi over 18 plus 12 pi over 18n, right? Remember when we were writing our solutions like plus 2 pi n, right? That was because that was one full cycle was 2 pi. Well, now one full cycle is 12 pi over 18, comma, 13 pi over 18 plus our period as well. So there's a general solution and there's our specific solution. So hopefully that helps a little bit and I will see you tomorrow.